Welcome to this remote control basics video. Now this video is in response to a couple of subscribers that have asked a really interesting question. And it's something that we've talked about in lots of other videos but never really took the time to explain. And that's about the difference between things called PAL and NTSC. And we come across this a lot, particularly when we're talking about FPV cameras and FPV goggles and video systems too. So what I want to do in this video is just very quickly cover at quite a high level what the difference between PAL and NTSC is and why it's important to always have them set the same on all of your video or FPV equipment that you're using as part of the hobby. You can see the kind of problems you get into if you don't have all of your technology set to the same setting, either PAL or NTSC, if we look back at the video that we shot where we talked about a little trick on the Black Pearl FPV diversity receiver for FPV where I'd accidentally managed to set one of my cameras to NTSC but my video system, the screen, was set to PAL and it looked like a series of rolling images. It looked like the what used to be called vertical hold on old TVs was broken and also the colour was wrong as well. It wasn't in colour, it was in black and white. And this is a very classic indication that you've got something set up differently in the system. So let's very quickly talk about what PAL and NTSC is and then we'll finish up with a couple of ideas just to keep you get from getting into trouble when you're setting up your FPV systems. So PAL was developed in Germany, phase alternation by line, has about 25 frames a second, so film typically runs at about 24 frames a second, so showing film uh, in almost its native speed on PAL televisions is pretty straightforward, you just increase it fractionally so it runs at 25 versus 24 frames a second. The resolution is a little bit higher than NTSC. Both of these systems were developed in response to the change from black and white to color transmissions. And the thing here that you might notice is that the 25 frames a second was chosen specifically because the NTSC spec that we'll look at in a second was designed to run on a 60 hertz main supply. Now that 60 hertz could be used to help drive and time a nice 30 frames per second refresh rate but in Europe, we don't use a 60 hertz main supply. We run our main supply at 50 hertz. So we also made the change for PAL, so it became a 25 frames per second system. So what you get if you use PAL, you get a lower frame rate than NTSC, but you get a higher resolution, so the picture looks slightly better. The way the color is handled is different as well. So there's inbuilt stuff within inside the PAL system so that a weak reception of the TV signal wouldn't destroy all the color in the image. NTSC, on the other hand, is a little bit different. So again, as we talked about, it, it runs slightly faster, so it's 30 frames a second. So it's six frames more than a typical film, and it's you get five additional frames every second over PAL. But you get it at a slightly lower resolution. And for those of us in Europe that have used to go to America and look at the older style TVs before everything started going HD, then you would have noticed that the TV image didn't look quite as nice as in the US. You didn't tend to notice the drop in frame rates going from Europe to America, but you did notice the drop in that resolution. It works at 60 hertz, again, that's why we have 30 frames a second. You do get less lines of resolution. So there are some people who talk about, well, why don't you just set everything to PAL all the time? Because if you do that, then you still get a really nice refreshed image. If film works at 24 frames a second and you get at least that with PAL and you get a little bit more resolution, why doesn't everybody use that? And that's an option. But if you then try and show that PAL encoded video on a device that's set to show NTSC, then it won't work. For those of you that are old enough, you might remember that you used to be able to buy uh, NTSC or PAL cassettes. And unless you had a video cassette player that you could change between PAL and NTSC, then you couldn't play it back. And it's exactly the same. So if you have a TV in the lounge that you want to show friends and family your FPV footage and it's on set to NTSC, then trying to show a PAL video won't work and vice versa. There is one other 
common gotcha that can catch you out when you're looking at setting this system up. Depending on where software is developed, either in Europe, in Japan, China, US, places like Brazil, Mexico, depends on whether or not they will default to NTSC or PAL. And if you have something like an on-screen display that's set for PAL and a camera that's set for NTSC, then when you plug those two together, they won't work. You might not even get to see the image coming across at all in your goggles. So be very careful when you're setting up an FPV system. I would always recommend go for the system that is local to you. So it's in America, I would set it up for NTSC. I'd also make sure that all my cameras were set to that. And I'd also set up my on-screen displays, my goggles, and things like any ground station video to be NTSC as well. Last point, there are other versions of encoding available. There's things, something called CCAM, which uh, the guys in France use. But if you'd like to know more about PAL and NTSC, there are some fantastic resources on places like Wikipedia that go into an awful lot more detail. But hopefully for those of you that are a little bit confused about what the difference is, that should cover it for you. So it's the difference between how the color signal is encoded and updated so it can be shown on a TV. And that is now the two systems that are commonly available in our remote control equipment. And you need to make sure that everything you're using is set for your local standard and then you'll be able to use and play with the video, encode it and watch it back without any problems. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.